Not silver! My god, the demon's in your head, sir! Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, K okay, Geek XX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Cobra Kai. We're now on to episode six, which is called Ouroboros. So we're back to the philosophical names of the title or uh, names of the episodes again. All right, well, in the last episode, things definitely did not go well for our guy Daniel. Daniel was spiraling a lot because of this situation with Silver. Silver was playing all kinds of mind games, and sadly, Daniel was playing into them. And as I discussed at length in the reviews, um, it's because Daniel hasn't dealt with his trauma around Silver and what happened. However, it was already in motion. Uh, his wife and kids had gone to Ohio. He was on his own. But thankfully, after a visit with Johnny, he kind of got his bearings back to a degree and realized that what he was doing and the way he was going about it was not him and also not going to be successful. So he actually attempted to make amends. Um, he wanted to go and back to Ohio and get his wife and kids, but he also wanted to buy uh, back um, Stingray's PS4 because he he, you know, pushed him and caused him to break it. But when he showed up there, Silver was waiting for him. And Silver, of course, goaded him the way that he always does. Daniel stepped into it because he's still not quite ready to let go of everything yet. And he got a pretty bad, pretty bad butt kicking. But I almost think that it was more the emotional beating that got Daniel than, than the actual, you know, physical beating of it all. But the last we saw of him, he was back at home. Uh, Amanda is back. And we see that Johnny has finally decided to, to enter the picture because up until now he's been very much dealing with his own stuff while Daniel's been dealing with all of this and on the kids side of things we saw that the kids just keep having issues with this Cobra Kai uh, versus the Miyagi-Do slash Eagle Fang kids um, it's turning into them always kind of butting heads over philosophies and of course we know that the Cobra Kai kids under creases now and now Silver's tutelage keep pushing that line of you know trying to always start the fight and always trying to bully and we see that Tori's starting to go through a bit of a moral dilemma because because she has her own stuff that's going on. But on top of that, she's starting to realize that she doesn't necessarily vibe with Silver's way of doing things. Like we know her and Crease had a relationship, but what Silver's doing, you know, especially with the cheating, it's already rubbed her the wrong way. And it's making her feel very conflicted about her win, being called a champion and being an example to other people. So we saw that she went to go see Crease in the last episode and Crease let us know that apparently Terry is in for a downfall. So I'm very interested to see if that means it's a plan that he already has has in motion or if it's what I already predict, which is that Silver will be his own undoing. So I'm about ready to get into this episode. But before I do, if this is your first time to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I do reactions to shows like this here. So if you are interested in seeing me do that, please think of hitting that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you can be on this journey with me and be notified when I do more uploads. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate it so, 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 so much if you'd hit that like button as well and leave comments below. I love getting engaged with you guys. And the same goes for those of you who come back again and again. Thank you so much for coming back and join the family if you haven't already. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into episode five, or no, sorry, episode six, right about now. Ooh, we love a man who has a jet, who has a limo right to the runway. We, we love a man who has private jets. Just me? Okay. And a red car. I'm not kidding, Silver, are you single? Oh, Jesus, did he bring in some black ops? What the hell is this? Why does someone have an eye patch? Oh, we got a female assassin? All right, what's up, sis? You must okay. be exhausted from your trip. Please, there are refreshments in the limo. Well, since you asked nicely. What happened to your eye, though, fam? I need, I need to know. This sort of extravagance might impress your former shareholders. Right? But it doesn't hold sway for me. Oh, it does for me. I'm very easily bought. <laughs> I'm offering you full autonomy test my students your way. Uh-oh. I did not get on the plane for money. How about food? What I'm offering you mm -hmm. is legacy. Uh-oh. We have to share his style with the world. You can, this man is such a salesman. Dang, you, you should have really have taken notes from <laughs> Silver looking more and more like a pimp every day. I like that they're bringing in some fresh faces, though, and not just people who are part tied to the Karate Kid canon. I want to do something about it, too, but we can't just go after Terry Silver without... Dad. Hi. Hi. Oh, he put on a suit and shaved. I can't wear my pajamas to the Russo Auto, can I? You go can't in to work? go in like that. I need to, but I'm out of this whole thing with Silver, all right? If he wants the valley, he could have it. No one oh, wants God. you. 
broken. You want me to make a list of how many ways they're hurting because of this, including my own daughter? Why don't you ask Robbie how much I've helped her? Oh. Yeah, he's still kind of mad at you. I never understood why Miss Miyagi walked away from a fight. But I understand it now. I mean, you're not doing it in the right way. Yeah, you completely misunderstood what Mr. Miyagi was saying. Like, Mr. Miyagi fought when necessary. The problem is you should never let it get to this point in the first place, Daniel. You're just giving up. Defeat is not the same as walking away. Mr. LaRusso got really hurt because of us. Well, that's one enemy gone. Did you expect empathy from this man? You don't care about what happened to Mr. LaRusso? No. It was a means to an end. Is that what I am? Of course not. <laughs> yeah, it's different for you today. I do wonder if Silver's keeping an eye on the prison. Yeah, he's smart. But he'll slip. And that'll be the opening that we need. He's not wrong. But really, Tori, the man just literally told you he didn't care about a man getting roughed up for your little crazy plan, and you think you wouldn't be expendable to him as well? Mm. The Panga Karate is now under new management. Mm. We're thrilled to be part of the Cobra Kai family. Thank you, Sensei. Anyone want to well? quit immediately? I'm sure you're all wondering what this means for the future of your dojo. Evil, cults, animal sacrifice. You'll be given a new sensei for today. Oh, you didn't know. You're replacing me? Terry? Yes. You're fired. Get out. Step up and take a gi from Sensei Odell. I'm good. If you want to quit, then at least take a complimentary thermos from Sensei Ew, Odell. no. Get away from me, propaganda whore. Looks like your students made their decision. Shalom, Sensei. Look, Shalom. You will help me test them. Welcome to the dark side. Being a double agent's not an easy job, ma'am. It's live, it's happening right now. Perfect, I'm gonna go down there and beat his ponytail ass. Okay, no. Amanda son is right. One man army, not good. I'll go with you. I come with you. Yeah! Hi. <laughs> they yes? Oh my god. Oh my god. They're so similar though. Jesus, that man's shoulders are the size of a state. It's a matter to have made any friends in the clink. Can't imagine why. Guess the nurse that changes your diaper has a day off. <laughs> I'm not mad because, you know, bullies get bullied. <laughs> Sensei supposed to be an insult? He probably has no idea what the word even means, which is sad. Usually easy targets. Mm. Oh, I made a stronger stuff. You could throw me right through a window and I wouldn't even get a scratch. <laughs> oh, can we test that theory? You're not just sweet talking me to get you a good recommendation. Absolutely. Right? Oh, of course not. Absolutely. Don't buy it. Oh, she kept her gi, that's why. I'm like, why is everyone avoiding her? Why are you still in that gi? You don't think you have what it takes to join Cobra Kai? I don't I'm want still to. still deciding whether your dojo has what it takes to earn me as a student. Period. Please, that ref was blind. He gave you a point when I was out of bounds. Exactly. But you have to take all that anger and you have to put it in your fists. Not, not the way to deal with it at all. That's what gets you in juvie. That's what gets you fighting girls in high schools with spikes on your fingers. Every time I have hope for Tori. You didn't have to come, I can handle this myself. I'm no, you can't. Face. You're not even sober. Did he mention how I kicked his ass back in high school? Yeah, high school. I robbed him while he was on date. Oh, yeah? Oh, no. Not them bonding over terrorizing Daniel. Oh, yeah, when you go. You know, a few months ago, I saw him take on an entire hockey team. Five on one, he beat them all. I mean, they're hockey players. I saw him save young girl from Typhoon. Yes, he did. Why are they <laughs> comparing stories? I can't. It's actually hilarious that they were still like trying to uh, one up each other, but it was about Daniel. Those are two besties. He better like keep them for life. Got a letter for you. Oh. Thanks. Can he read? Guess we'll never know, was not it? I just got a letter from the from the warden. Mm. I think something went wrong with my petition for early release. Why? I, I thought we were making great strides. Mm. You think this is my first day. Right? I know the difference between a breakthrough and saying what I want to hear. Perry. I'm free all tomorrow morning if you'd like to chat. For real. Plenty of time for us to dig deep. 
you're in her dojo now. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's gonna steal her card. We would train at the peak long after the sun has set and the night. Oh my god. Why do all villains have to model? I would train among them. Why can't they just dig, you know, just a few bullet points and let's move on? Pick this up. Stop her. Why are you yelling? You're right here. <laughs> Do you really want to be Cobra Kai? You do not accept defeat. You do not accept surrender. Who fight as if today is your last. Ma'am, we are high schoolers. What do you want me to do? Cry into a tissue? I thought you were a sensei. I am a sensei. Are you? No. I'm here to help. He I just to want it. Deep down, you're a good man. I don't think something happened in your past. Damn. You turned her into a whole white girl? That's some deep trauma. But her death allowed me to do what I had to do. Mm -hmm. I knew he was going to turn it Whatever around. Whatever it took to save yourself. Oh. It was war. Oh, but that violence followed you home. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of this. <laughs> what an interesting choice of words. Not silver! My God, the demon's in your head, sir. Please don't Is attack this woman. Job? At who? Having a whole ass hallucination? I did nothing wrong. Oh? So you don't feel any regret? A little bit of conscience. When's Johnny showing up? What exactly am I supposed to feel regret for? I don't know. Abusing Can children. You've heard. Oh my god, this CGI! You heard a lot I'm of trying people. To make my students tough. No, you were trying to help I yourself. Them all to be like you. My god, this is trippy. Yeah. I know you can be better than the person you've become. It's always up to you. You just have to find them. Oh, no. Not you versus you. That guy, before he took a terrible, terrible path. Ooh. He said, rope chop. Ooh! Chopes and you sexy mother. Wait, seriously, if it takes two of you guys to take out one of these senseis, you're in trouble. So far, I gotta give it to Blondie. I mean, he's taking on the both of y'all. In fairness, he does have youth on his side. Hey, double dragon. No. Mm-hmm. Let's make it fair. Far from your pathetic little island, aren't you? Ooh, not Korean Japanese beef. You bark like your blonde dog. I do more than bark. Trust me. He's like, I work for LaRusso. Too much advantage. Their dojo. Their dojo. We fight one time, that's right. Yeah, that's a Miyagi right there. We're not gonna let you take over the valley. We already did. Then we'll take it back. Or whatever. You beat me on the mat, but I only lose if I give up. This is not the right path. Now you're starting to understand what Robbie was trying to tell you, hey? But now we understand why she didn't leave Cobra Kai, though. I defeated six senseis from Bari by myself. It took two of us to stand against just one. I'm glad you recognize. Uh, okay, okay, let's just take a breath here before we start entertaining assault with deadly weapons. Right? No offense, Johnny, but strategy isn't exactly your forte. You're more of a blunt instrument. Thank you. Felt like karate just made everything worse for everyone. And have even got scars to prove it. That bitch. The lessons that I learned. Mr. Miyaki's lessons. Yeah, Miyaki. They'll be even more powerful than the first time I put on that key. And besides, they had nothing to do with these messed up children. Miyagi was never the problem. <laughs> this is a fight we can't walk away from. Miyagi wouldn't want Daniel to be defeated. Hey, Sensei. I'm here for my jello cup today. Do you think I got food in my cell? How the hell is this bag of bones in here for assault? <laughs> Why would you assault an old man? That's what you should be asking yourself. Interesting that they have the younger. And it's hard to say because this crease was kind of like a pivotal moment for him between the guy that wanted to help out people being bullied and stop himself from being bullied and before he turned into a bully. 
But I'm also assuming they did this switch out because I think uh, Martin Cove can't exactly do them type of moves no more. <laughs> oh no. Don't feed the ego, please. We almost made progress. From now on, you're gonna give me your job. I know that was supposed to sound hard, but it just, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he should get roughed up in prison either. I understand that he's gotta like protect himself. I'm just saying. With Kreese, it's always just one little step, you know, one little step away from toppling right back into evil overlord. Is this Mr. Miyagi's Amanda, old house? I don't go in there. Probably make sure it's like clean. It's probably dusty and stuff. You know, I always loved how Mr. Miyagi lived so simply, like his house was so basic, even though he had that grandiose yard and all those cars, like it was such a great illustration of the kind of man he was. Oh, hello, Tam. Oh, they recreated his sign. I came here to see Mr. Miyagi. He sat me down, poured me a cup of tea some sake hey and what i believe in now is standing up to terry silver it's the right thing to do i'm sorry it took me so long to realize it i mean you weren't wrong i can't fail these kids again mm. you didn't fail me oh hey what's up robbie thanks sam things i did to me i was i was just trying to help you no, I'm, I'm sorry. But we can't do it without you. Sensei. Dad, not everyone has someone like you to protect It's like we were having a moment, Sam. Could you let me finish the, okay. Yeah, the students were like, can we come back and train with you? Cause it's been the longest summer ever. Dimitri had to get a real job, he hated it. So what do you say, Dad? Will you fight? Can I heal up? I really got my ass kicked, like bad. <laughs> Anthony. I have a crumb in my face this whole time. Hey, my three senseis. Robbie looking fine or whatever. Let's do this. All right, rousing music and everything. Okay, we have come back around you guys. That was episode six, which um, we finally got to Daniel kind of coming back from his little dark place there. I shouldn't say little, it was uh, a long time coming. He's been going pretty hard since season one, but let's kind of go through the characters. I'll kind of end on Daniel since this was kind of like the wrap up of his little dipping arc. We'll start with um, Tori and Kreese. So now we know the reason why Tori actually went back to the dojo is because Kreese actually her to. She actually didn't want to go back to Cobra Kai without Kreese there, but Kreese is trying to get her to gather intel, anything she can to bring back to Kreese so that he can use it to take Silver down and obviously somehow clear his name. But We've seen that it's taking a toll on Tori. Um, it, it definitely explains a little bit more of why she was quite so combative with Robbie about not leaving Cobra Kai. I mean, I thought some of it did come from her guilt, um, you know, the holding on to the trophy when she knows she didn't earn it. Although I think she is still grappling with that a little bit. But now we can see it's really just because she does not want Robbie digging any further into why she's there. Because again, Robbie probably would not approve of her doing this covert mis mission anyways, and probably would tell her to, to back out of it. But we see that, um, huh, yeah, Chris. Chris is an in interesting character, right? Like I'm not, like I said, I'm not really ready for his redemption arc at this point. But one thing I do love about this show is that it shows that everybody has sides. Well, most of them, for the most part, all the main characters have been shown as multifaceted, right? Having good qualities, having not so good qualities, making good choices, bad choices. Chris in the first movie and in the third movie was very one dimensional. It's really been through this series that we've gotten to get some background on him. Like we didn't know anything about his mom being sick or him having to take care of her. We knew nothing about the love of his life. Like none of that stuff was ever drop in the movies. So now we're getting those layers that kind of make him more of a three-dimensional person instead of just the villain. And conversely with Tori, like the first few seasons of Tori, she was very one note as well, came in as a villain, didn't have a lot of logic to what she was doing and just seemed like, you know, you, you've heard me rant about her. Like my biggest issue with her is that she was just so unnecessarily mean so much of the time and really taking no accountability for that, always blaming her situation for why she was able to, or why she would do these things to people. But we're seeing that the 
layers are getting added. And now for Tori, you know, this is her season along with Chris to be getting a little bit more depth behind what she's doing. In the last season, we saw that she is taking care of her sick mother and her little brother and having to take on a lot of adult responsibilities. And yes, that definitely makes you age a lot faster and it does kind of make you toughen up. But as I said before, being a mean or being a bully is a choice. And that's the way that Tori chose to handle her difficulties rather than trying to be more diplomatic or embracing about it. And I still stand by that. I'm not saying she can't change. I'm just saying I'm not going to mince words and say, oh, it's an excuse because there is no excuse for being a bully. Or again, you know, as Sam pointed out in this episode, her being forever scarred by Tori over what was the stupidest fight in the world. But I digress. We see that Tori is really trying here. Like she is starting to grapple more and more with her conscience. I think Robbie's influence is starting to rub off on her. The fact that she doesn't like it, right? Like it started with losing, the, well, not losing, but realizing that she lost the tournament. And now just seeing that Silver is, you know, taking all these dojos and twisting them into something else. Her having to, you know, she's relating with, um, I can't remember the name of the girl who um, was part of Eagle Fang. Uh, her relating to her on having lo lost a parent and having to shoulder adult responsibilities young, but then having to turn around and tell her to use her grief and pain in violence. Like that, that lesson is the core reason why Cobra Kai is a problem is that that is not a healthy way to deal with your anger or your pain, right? That's not, that's not what martial arts is for. That is not the, the at least most martial arts were not created for that. And if you use it for that, that is exactly how you end up like a crease or like a silver or like a lot of people who end up in jail because they've done violent things. There are healthier ways to deal with your anger. And Miyagi, this is why I'm always team Miyagi though, right? He was like, when you're angry, Daniel, when you feel yourself going crazy, it's because you're off balance, right? He always brought Daniel back to the reason for his behavior. And it's like, it doesn't have to do with that guy or this guy. It doesn't have to do with what she said, he said. It has to do with you being off center. When you're off center, things will knock you over. But when you're centered and you're balanced, it doesn't matter what comes at you. And that's why Mr. Miyagi could let, you know, Silver could launch everything he wanted at him and it would just roll off Miyagi's back because he's centered. He's like, I'm good. You can't knock me off this perch. Only I can do that. So that's really why I prefer Miyagi-Do methodology. And you can see now that Tori is recognizing that that's a better philosophy because she's felt more at balance when she wasn't, you know, leaning into that violent nature. And I feel like when she's probably around Robbie, she feels more of that as well. But when she has to lean into Silver's way of doing things, or when she hears Kreese say things like, oh, screw Mr. or screw Mr. LaRusso because he's collateral damage. Like that doesn't feel good to her anymore. So that's good. That means she's changing in the right direction. And I think, you know, as we progress through the season, she's going to find more reasons to finally take her stance. I mean, I don't know if she's going to be, you know, an angel by the end of this or anything, but I think she's definitely inching towards a better place. And then of course, with Kreese in the prison, um, again, we got a little bit more in depth with him. I like that they're using the prison psychologist to actually delve into why he is the way that he is because if Kreese ever wants to change he would of course have to examine what brought him to being just the most vile person there is and of course like I mean I was scoffing in the episode but I know that what that psychiatrist was saying is true like there is a good man somewhere deep inside of Kreese <laughs> but he has to let go of all the anger and the pain and the fear really for Kreese it's fear right he was scared scared for his mom scared about losing his woman and then he went to Vietnam it was you know being scared of being you know left behind of, of dying at the hands of these en of the enemy and it's like that fear he channeled that into anger and that anger is what makes him think that he's powerful but like because he keeps saying oh it makes us strong no true strength does not need to be demonstrated through violence true strength is being able to just take care of yourself and handle your own stuff hence why Mr. Miyagi was like the strongest character in this series period but digressing at least he had a chance to kind of start thinking about some of the reasons why he is where he is does that mean he's going to make a change we'll have to see i mean he's been this way for over seven or what no sorry if you were to take his turning point self i'd say it's been over 50 years that he's been like this so it's a long way to be uh, in that way and he hasn't been that nice that nice guy we saw back in the flashback last season for a very long time so if he is still in there then he's gonna have to dig deep and actually be consistent as far as the new senseis as i said in the episode i kind of like the fact that we're bringing in brand new characters i mean really just one i think the female character is really who we're going to be focusing on the rest are basically background noise but i do like the idea of them not necessarily seeing like who else can we dig up from the movies <laughs> I don't actually think there's that many more people they can bring in from the movies that had significant roles. Um, but I do like the idea of some new blood in there just because it makes sense, right? Silver 
was in the third movie, the end of the Karate Kid original uh, franchise. So there really wasn't many more people we could bring in. And it makes sense that his friends or his connections would be outside of things that we would know as an audience. So we'll see how she fits into all of this. She's an interesting addition. And I kind of like that we're bringing in a girl for once because it's been very dude heavy when it comes to all the guys um, and all the characters that have been coming in that weren't like Daniel's love interests, that is. So we'll see uh, whether or not she's going to be somebody. I feel like she's going to be the person who's going to sniff Tori out though as the double agent uh, because she's really keeping an eye on her for sure. But um, and then we had with so and then otherwise we basically dealt with Daniel. Daniel basically was defeated. You know, we saw when he was laying on the floor of that apartment last episode, it was very symbolic of him being like, I give up. I'm broken. I'm defeated. I don't want to do this anymore. And, you know, he basically want to just go back to being Daniel, the dealership guy and pretend it was over. But we all know that deep down it wouldn't have been over for Daniel because he wasn't really giving up or walking away. He was leaving because he was in despair, right? He felt like hopeless. He felt like he was defeated and that's why he was crawling away. And that's not the right way to go about it. And it's interesting because he kept saying, oh, Mr. Miyagi, he would have told me to walk away. This is what he would have wanted. And it's like, Mr. Miyagi would want would have wanted you to have let this whole thing with Cobra Kai go from like season one. <laughs> Let's be clear. Mr. Miyagi would have told you to leave Johnny alone and let him reopen Cobra Kai and do his own business. And if it happens to cross into his business, you know, Daniel's, that's when you make it your business. But other than that, you go your way, let Johnny go his, right? Because we wouldn't be here if Daniel just left well enough alone, so to speak. But anyways, where things are now, as uh, I love that um, was it Sam said that, you know, was it Sam? Yeah, Sam was saying that, you know, Mr. Miyagi fought when he had to. And that's so true. Like if we look in the first movie, Mr. Miyagi could have sat back and let Daniel get his butt kicked that night at the dance when he, you know, pulled his little prank on Johnny and basically pulled the wrath of all of Cobra, Cobra Kai back to him. But he stepped in because it was the right thing to do at that time, or was he felt it was the right thing to do. He stepped in, be all their asses and, and save Daniel because it was the right time to fight, right? And then in Karate Kid Part 2 with Sato, he could have fought Sato. It's not that he didn't have the ability to, but the reason he avoided that fight is because he knew it wasn't for the right place. He knew that what Sato needed was peace and forgiveness and not, you know, more, you know, fuel to the fire in that situation. But we saw that when, um, you know, Sato was there lying under debris, that it was Mr. Miyagi, who, you know, he pulled out the fire of the dragon and broke that beam to get his friend out of there, right? So that's the whole thing with Miyagi. Like, and then even when in Karate Kid Part 3, when the bully showed up at the, bonsai tree store and they started messing things up. You saw again, Mr. Miyagi, when he had to defend himself, he would fight. So Miyagi was never the type to just step back and just, you know, to be defeated, if that makes sense. Like he would walk away from fights. Although even he admitted, if you remember in Karate Kid Part 2, he admitted that he feels like he probably should have fought for Yukie, not in the sense of fighting Sato, but he feels like he should have stood his ground on wanting to be with Yuki A because he did love her. And that's probably the one time he basically did what Daniel's doing right now, where he walked away from the fight rather than standing his ground where it was important. And the reason why Daniel can't walk away at this point is because Silver isn't going to stop. We already heard that last episode. Silver's like, just because you want to give up doesn't mean I'm going to stop. And he's crazy. So Daniel can't roll over and let this man walk all over him at this point because it will do more harm than good. He needs to stand his ground. It now is a matter of self-defense. So he needs to stand up, get his confidence back and figure out the the best way to fight, but not in the sense of I got to beat Silver. It's more Miyagi was always about protecting himself and the people he cared about. It was never about necessarily gaining ground. And that's, I think, where Daniel needs that rebalancing. So I really like that it kind of came back around full circle. That whole scene with him going into Mr. Miyagi's old apartment at the back of his house was a really beautiful moment, very touching for those of us who are fans of the first movie. And I love, you know, the reference that Amanda had of, you know, her conversation with Mr. Miyagi, the reference to how much love he had for Daniel which I think was always apparent throughout the films. And the fact that Mr. Miyagi would definitely be encouraging Daniel to not give up and not to walk away broken from this situation, but to refine his balance, just like in Karate Kid 1, when he went back into the battle with a busted leg because he needed to rebalance himself and feel, find that center again. So, and I love that Robbie finally came back. I'm glad that finally came full circle. Robbie needed some time to process. I understand that, but I'm glad that he admitted that, yes, Daniel gave you a job. He gave you a roof over your head. He gave you food to eat. He gave you a, a family by extension. You know, he let you date his daughter. <laughs> he couldn't stop Sam, let's be real. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? He gave you all these things. And yes, he put you in jail, but you committed a crime and you needed to do what you needed to do in order to move forward from that. So understandable for Robbie to be upset about being turned in without any notice, but he's had enough time, thankfully, to process the fact that it wasn't done out of anything but concern. Nothing that Daniel ever did to him was out of anything 
anything but concern. So I'm glad that Daniel got that because it was clearly something that was still bothering him a lot that Robbie and him hadn't resolved it. So at least they're back on the same page and we see that Miyagi-Do may ri rise once again with three senseis now. So we'll see if that's enough to go up against the, the Kang Su. What is the Kang Su? I, I can't remember the name of the other martial arts, but apparently it's pretty hardcore because we, as we saw, I took two of uh, the karate masters to uh, try to take down that one guy. So we'll see what happens. They might have to dig into what our guy Chosen knows about that martial art. Maybe not to use it, but maybe to defend against it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, have to get old Daniel back in the mix. The only thing that I think was interesting is still missing is that we don't have Mike again. Mike is still missing. Um, we heard that he went away for, you know, while they were assessing the damage, but it's interesting that he's not back um, and not wanting to maybe join into this because he really has a dog in this fight now. But I, it would also be understandable if he just wants to walk away since, you know, the last time he tried to help his whole business and livelihood got burnt down. So hopefully we'll see him again because, you know, I love me some Sean Cannon and I feel like that dynamic with all four of them would be super fun to see. So anyways, this is a fun episode. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and we will see you in the next video.